welcome to the Airda. I'm Chloe Lewis. And I'm Andrew Cronister. Today we'll be covering DECA traveling to Boston, Massachusetts, the food drive at AHS, and much, much more coming up on The, the Airda. Directly from the Alma High School News Studio, covering news and sports from where it matters, you're watching The Airda. As we all know, the Airedale is our mascot, but do you know how we became the Airedales? Grayson Hopper and Tyler Wilcox took a look into this intriguing subject. The origins of school mascots are sometimes unknown, but today we will be digging a little bit deeper into the origins of the Airedale and the history of Alma High School. There are some unknowns when it comes to the origin of the Airedale, depends on who you ask. So I, I did ask um, someone very reliable as to how they believe that the Airedale mascot came about. And uh, that's our current superintendent, David Woolley, who's been in part of the Alma School District for almost 50 years. And he re recalls a story that had been told generation to generation and uh, believes it to be true, that when the, uh, the Alma High School, the old school, sets basically where Crabtree Gym is right now. So, there was an elementary school that sat on the Alma High School campus that burned down in the early 60s. And then not long after, when they built the intermediate school, which became the elementary school, uh, they, they built a new high school and tore down the old um, high school, which is, then they filled it in and built Crabtree almost on top of it. But when the old high school was there, then that was built around the turn of the century, uh, around 1900, that they started having sports teams that were being competitive. They would compete on Saturdays. They would even compete during the day, um, like in you know 10 o'clock in the morning. So there wasn't an organized athletic activity association like there is now. But knowing that they needed a mascot, there were groups of uh, Alma community members that would meet in what they kind of had an old gymnasium as part of the old school. And they met about coming up with a mascot because other area teams were having mascots. And they went through the normal conversations of all these different animals, that, and they just couldn't agree on anything. Um, and then there was an actually there was a young a child of one of the members that was there that happened to be kind of playing around and came outside. I came back inside and and was kind of telling them, hey, there was an Airedale. I think this is an Airedale dog running across the parking lot playing out. And somebody suggested, hey, about Air, how about Airedales? And it stuck. Um, and that was believed to have happened in the 19 teens. So um, we can't find any written record that that's verifiably correct, but that is the story that has been told that it was through a, through a conversation of them coming up with a mascot that was, happens to be an Airedale that belonged to somebody close by that ran across the parking lot, and that's how they chose the Airedales. Well, there you have it. That was the origin of the Airedale. I'm Tyler. And I'm Grayson with Airways Media. Food drives helps food banks, food pantries, and soup kitchens collect food donations to keep their shelves stocked. Food drives are also a great way to raise awareness about hunger in your community and encourages others to help. Hunger affects every community, but many people don't, don't realize it. Joshua Wagley talked with Mr. Kelly to find out more about this important subject. Most people think of Thanksgiving as a holiday where you eat a lot of food. However, for some families in a financial crisis, it can be a struggle to get a meal. Thanks to Alma High School's Food for Friends program, some of those families will have food on the table this year. We do collect uh, non-perishable food items uh, through the months of October and November. We uh, send those out in food boxes with our backpack program. And for those families that are in need, we restock all the outdoor food pantries around town. And then whatever we have left over, we donate to the Community Outreach Center. Food for Friends is a club that was started six years ago by a couple of students. Uh, a couple of juniors uh, and seniors that I had in ACT prep decided they wanted to start um, sort of a community service project uh, for scholarships and applications. And since then, they've already graduated and actually have already graduated college, uh, but the program that they started and developed is still going strong. The TSA or Technology Students Association is starting a club war to see which of the clubs can gather the largest amount of cans. Mr. Kelly hopes this will help them reach this year's goal. Um, the goal this year is to send out 50 uh, food boxes uh, at school through our backpack program and to those that are in need. Um, and then our secondary goal 
is to uh, do that again at Christmas. So do 50 at Thanksgiving, 50 again at Christmas. And then our third goal is to be able to stock all the outdoor food pantries from Thanksgiving through Christmas, and, so, and we'll do that every week. The Food for Friends was managed last year, even though COVID was going around. It helped people more than ever because of jobs shutting down and money being tight. Also, the food benefits Alma students and the families in the community and local food pantries. Here's how you get involved. Uh, there, well, there's lots of ways. Um, a lot of times it's actually through donations, um, you know, going out and collecting items and bringing those items in uh, that we can put in the boxes and in the food pantries. Um, a lot of people volunteer time with uh, boxing it all up and getting it all delivered. And uh, a lot of people volunteer time just with advertising, you know, sharing it on social media, making announcements uh, and things like that. So there's lots of ways to um, sort of contribute uh, to Food for Friends, uh, whether you're donating food or donating time or physically going out and, uh, and doing things. Uh, it all benefits the program and it benefits all the families in our community. For Airways Media, I'm Joshua Wagley. DECA prepares emerging leaders and entrepreneurs in marketing, finance, hospitality, and management in high schools and colleges around the globe. DECA prepares the next generation to be academically prepared, community-oriented, professionally responsible, and experienced leaders. But why would someone become a DECA member? Heston Averett and Dalton Davis talk with the DECA advisor, Mrs. Sherry Seiler, and students to find out about their upcoming trip to Boston, Massachusetts. Eight students from the DECA program in Alma High School will be traveling to Boston to represent our school in the National DECA Conference. The trip to Boston, Massachusetts will be the first conference they've gone to since November 2020. So we have um, eight students attending. Dr. Wood and I will be attending too, and we're looking forward to representing Alma High School and Alma DECA at the power trip. Yep. They'll have several different activities for them to participate in, such as leadership learning labs, and networking with people from around the country. Yeah, and then we're going to be doing some other stuff other than the competition itself. Um, we're going to go look at MIT as well as Harvard, which are some of the highest caliber schools in Boston. And then we'll be enjoying some of the Boston foods, such as the clam chowder and the Boston sweet roll. Yeah, and then we're also going to go on the Freedom Trail Walk, which is huge if you've ever like looked at it in the history world. So we'll be able to see the Boston Tea Party and see one of the biggest um, Revolutionary War days. This is Dalton Davis and Heston Avery from Airwaves Media. Many students here at Alma High School take on the task of having a job while in school. But how does having a job interfere with school? Lewis Alexander and Christian Sullivan spoke with students about this major topic. Job finding is really hard for some teens, but sometimes you might find a good job that pays well. We're going to talk about a few restaurants and how difficult the job is. To get a job here, you have to, uh, first of all, you have to get on time every day okay it's one of the principles requirements you guys have to you know like anybody has to get on time um be nice with our customers you know answer any question the customers got for you if you can answer a customer you can come to me and ask me hey this customer wants uh to know if you guys can prepare this meal or this plate for him. You know, maybe it's not in the menu, but you always have to be nice with the customer, doesn't matter what. And the customer always gonna be right, okay? Um, be happy every day, of course, smile. Um, friendly, get along with you. Friends, workers, uh, you know, other people work here, get along with everybody, and more than anything, you had to always, you know, do something in the way you always had to keep the restaurant clean. Help others, even if it's not your table, you had to help the others, okay? Here are a couple of employees from two other establishments. For my first
first job interview I've ever been to. It, I went in very nervous, but as the interview actually started and I sat down to be questioned for the interview, those nerves kind of just like disappear. <laughs> and for like the rest of the interview, I was like very calm and it was an enjoyable first interview. For me to have a job, it's like a, a second chance, an open door. So, <laughs> I feel like if you have a job, you should probably like it. I'm a butcher, so it takes a lot of bronze. <laughs> um, I didn't have an interview, I just, um, I kind of interviewed myself and they were like, are you actually going to work? So, that's how mine went. This is Lewis Alexander and Chris Sullivan with Airwaves Media. Blue light glasses help you filter out some of the blue light in computer monitors, cell phones, and TVs, and overall help with eye care when using digital screens. Here is Evan Sanderson with more on this topic. So blue light glasses are, uh, as you probably know, something you're supposed to wear at night when you're using screen, you know, some kind of screen device or TVs or something like that. Uh, what they say they're supposed to do, so if we do a little, little information on what blue light is like everybody knows Roy G Biv red orange yellow green blue and they'll go out so your blue indigo and violet over here uh, is your blue light which the sunlight produces that and so what that does during the daytime it it basically tells your body that it is daytime and it's time to stay awake because of the blue light that's getting into you um, it keeps you from making what's called melatonin which makes you sleepy so the problem is when you're looking at screens it's emitting some of that blue light so it's, what it really is what it's doing is it's telling your body that it's still daytime and it will make you stop producing melatonin. So it makes your body think, stay awake, stay awake. So blue light lenses, what they're supposed to do is block out that blue light to allow your body at nighttime to start making the melatonin. That's why you don't really need to wear, or they say you don't need to wear blue light lenses during the daytime because you're needing to be staying awake anyway. So it messes with sleep rhythms um, they're called circadian rhythms. Um, if you look at screens at night and you don't have the lenses on. Ophthalmologist Rishi Simig Indy says many people experience eye discomfort from digital screens, but most of the intense, most of the issues actually fall under a term called computer vision syndrome. CVS is a broad range of eye strain and discomfort issues. Your eyes are constantly shifting focus and moving while looking at the screen. Plus the glare and constant contrast can be tough on your eyes. So although you may be experience eye irritation from a long day working on your computer, your eye discomfort is not directly from the blue light itself. How do they work? They, so the blue light lenses, they're specially crafted lenses, supposedly. I mean, they're not real regulated, so there hasn't been a whole lot of research on them. Uh, but they're supposed to, these lenses are supposed to block out the blue light that's coming from your screens. And what that does is then allows uh, your body to produce the melatonin to make you sleepy at nighttime. If you've ever felt like your eyes were dry and tired after a long day of staring at a computer screen, you're not alone. It happens to most people nowadays. Digital screens emit blue light, which can have negative consequences on your eyes. These include strained, dry, watery, or irritated eyes. So how do people handle the negative consequences of digital screens? Blue light glasses are built to block out blue light that is emitted from our devices that we use daily. They help when gaming, working, watching television, and more. They use special lenses that filter the blue light and wavelengths. There are many ways to gain new experiences and expand your mind. One of the ways to do so is learning a new language. Stetson Goodson and Jace Brantley took a deeper look into the language of love. 
There are two language classes at Alma, such as Spanish and French. Today we will be talking about French. French, we do many things every year. Um, in French 1, we've been learning how to greet people and how to say our alphabet. We've been learning basic phrases. In French 2, we've been reviewing a bit of French 1, including adjectives and family members. And in French 3, we've been continuing that with more nouns um, and greater nouns and adjectives, more conversation, and um, we're getting into different tenses, the past, present, and future. There are multiple reasons why you could choose French over Spanish. Here's why the French teacher chose French. Um, I always knew I wanted to be a teacher from a very young age, and so um, when Honestly, the story is when I went to my university, I sat down in, my in the chair in my advisor's room and said, he asked me what I was going to do. And I said, well, I'm going to be a high school teacher. And he said, what are you going to teach? And I said, I don't know what subjects seem interesting. And he said, you just came back from spending time in a, ha in a host family in France. He said, why don't you teach French? And I said, oh, that would be fun. Sure, or maybe math or science. And he said, Let's just stick with one subject. And I said, okay, French sounds good. That is why Mrs. Parham chose French. Here, is, here are the French teacher's main way of teaching French. Um, I think I um, teach in many different ways to try to attract many different students. Um, we do some hands-on activities. We do some speaking activities. We do some reading and writing. And we also talk a lot about the culture. The kids um, tend to enjoy those conversations quite a bit as well. So um, sometimes we watch videos, sometimes um, like short um, clips on music or a funny clip from a TV show or something. But I, I try to incorporate lots of different ways to teach. This is Jace Brandley and Stetson Goodson from Airways Media. Cooking can be a lot of fun, making pasta dishes of all types or whipping up some quick dinner for some guests. Tegan Carlisle and Christian Carpenter explored what the cooking class here at Alma High School is like. Uh, in our foods class, we cook all sorts of foods. Uh, we do a unit on international foods, so we may cook pasta, uh, we'll do fettuccine alfredo, uh, we'll do some uh, a unit on breads. We cook uh, brownies sometimes. Uh, this week we're having a Halloween competition, so we're uh, decorating cupcakes. So really it's a variety of foods. Sometimes they're healthy, sometimes not quite so healthy. As you can see, there are many types of foods to cook in the foods class, and the students enjoy cooking. I love it when they get to experiment and create something like this week when we're doing the Halloween decorating. They get to decorate their cupcakes any way they want. That's a lot of fun. Um, I really like the bread unit and uh, the foreign foods when we try things. Uh, we even do things like alternative proteins and they get to uh, sample crickets and do some unusual stuff. So that's always fun. We usually cook every Thursday and Friday. Uh, sometimes uh, we'll cook an extra day. Uh, but most of the time, every Thursday and Friday, the kids are in the uh, kitchen cooking. Uh, originally, I was a business teacher, and I taught business for uh, 19 years. And then the opportunity to uh, teach these classes came open. And I thought it was interesting, sounded fun, and I absolutely love it. Uh, it's the best decision I ever made. I love my cooking classes. Uh, I love teaching lifespan development, and I love my sewing class. This is Tegan Carlisle and Christian Carpenter with Airwaves Media. Many people walk past heirlooms and don't know how the store works. Destiny Wheeler and Ben Mitchell took a look into the store. Heirlooms is an Airedale clothing store run by the Decker program to make profits for events that happen for the school. Here's Logan Jackson and Colton Wormke speaking on the Decker Heirlooms store. Heirlooms is a school-based enterprise that is ran, managed, and operated by students of Alma Decca. We sell official Airedale's merchandise as well as Spirit Week merchandise for the students of Alma High School as well as the community. The purpose of Heirlooms is to give a learning lab to marketing students to learn, give better 21st century skills, such as using the point of sale term terminal, stocking inventory, and window display. This is Ben Mitchell and Destiny Wheeler with Airwaves Media. 
The theater department here in Alma High School is one of the most popular programs in school. Jace Brantley and Stetson Goodson took a behind-the-scenes look at this incredible program. Drama Club is a big part of Alma because they put a lot of our plays, such as the day Alien visited where the town where nothing ever happens. That did last year. Here are some plays drama will be putting on. This year, our drama department will be performing a one act called The Messenger. Uh, it's something that our advanced acting class is doing right now, and they'll be performing at a one act festival. And then um, we'll be performing it for the school and the community uh, in January. Uh, we're also working on the Elf, the musical. That's our big uh, production this fall, and that's what our fifth period production class has been uh, working on, and we'll be performing for the school and community in December. Every teacher has their favorite play. Here is the drama's teacher favorite play. I think we've done some wonderful plays. Uh, it's, it's hard to choose just one. Emma, the, mus the uh, musical, will always be one of my favorites just because that was the first one that I was a part of here. But um, I don't really have, I can't say that I have a, uh, a favorite. Uh, you know, this year Elf is my favorite. Here's what the drama club has been doing. Drama Club is exciting this year just because we didn't get to do much last year. So we have a group that dresses up in fairy tale costumes and they go out into the community and they read, they, they get to visit with little children uh, and they get to read fairy tale stories to them. We're also doing a food drive uh, in October. We will be dressing up uh, in Halloween costumes and going out into the community and collecting canned goods. And all of that, uh, all of those donations will go to our Food for Friends program. So that's just the tip of the iceberg. We've got lots of things planned uh, this year and we're just really excited about our club. In drama class, um, in all of our production classes, we've mainly been focusing on our performances for this fall. So uh, our stagecraft classes have been working on building the set for Elf and uh, our musical production class has been working since this summer on, on ELF, and then our, our advanced acting class has been working on the one act, The Messenger, since this summer. Here is why the Drama Club president joined drama. So I started doing drama in middle school and I absolutely fell in love with it. And I saw all the wonderful things that Drama Club had to offer, whether I do with leadership things and like community service and just events around town. And I just knew I had to get involved in that. So I joined. From Airways Media, this is Jace Brantley and Setson Goodson. Basketball is one of the most popular sports in high school, and this year's season is about to begin. Remy Starber and Dallin Hamby spoke with the newest member of the girls' basketball coaching staff to find out who she is and why she came to Alma. Coach Bottoms is entering her first year as an assistant girls' basketball coach and a health teacher. Uh, I came to Alma to, to teach. I've been um, teaching. This is my first year at Alma and I am the health teacher and I also am the assistant girls basketball coach. Uh, this is my third, no, fourth year at the high school level. I spent 10 years at the collegiate level coaching. This is not her first year at Elma. Coach Bottoms was a former basketball player here at Elma where they won the championship in 2005. Um, this is my hometown, so family was, was my number one reason for, for coming home. And then number two is I played on the state championship team in 2005 and I wanted to um, come back here and, and try to do it again, um, not only this time uh, as a coach. I think, I think it would be cool to win it as, as a coach and as a player. So that's the reason why I wanted to come back. Coach Bottoms received her science degree in organizational leadership from the University of Arkansas Fort Smith and is proud to be a part of the Alma faculty. Um, I have always loved basketball and um, I could never see myself um, not being around the game so my only option was to either go pro and as you get older uh, there's not a whole lot of people that go pro so coaching was, was my way to stick around basketball. I'm Dallin Hamby and Remy Scarber for Airways Media. Coaching is certainly one of the toughest jobs out there. The coaches of Alma work very hard to make sure our sports players are at their peak. Let's venture with Sarah Nutt and Seth Canales to see how the coaches feel about their profession. 
Being a coach is a huge job. Keeping the players in line and making sure they win can be very challenging, but it can also be very rewarding when the team wins. Today we ask many Alma High School coaches how they personally feel about coaching. Uh, the rewarding part, I mean, just seeing kids succeed, knowing that when they came to you that you sent them off in a life better than um, what you got them, like teaching them to be good young men and women, um, and just being a good role model for them and uh, encouraging them and letting them know like, you know, if you can succeed on the sports field, then, then you're gonna be sitting in a good place for life. And then after my high school career was over, you know, I just, I felt like I needed to, you know, keep help, helping students play the game. And so that's when a friend of mine at, right after high school, you know, we started coaching. Uh, we just wanted to, you know, pass along our wisdom. that we As we can see from the interview, coaches have quite the job to carry on their backs, and a lot of respect goes to them for doing their jobs and taking care of the team. I'm Sarah Nutt with Airwaves Media. One Piece is an anime that has been running since 1999 and is currently has over 900 episodes. Jackson Frey Aldenhoven took a dive into this pirate-themed adventure. During quarantine, times got boring without people being able to go outside of their homes. This led to people trying out new things, with one of these being reading books and manga, which are Japanese comics. One of these comics, written by mangaka Eiichiro Oda, has taken the world by storm. One Piece is a wacky story that focuses on Monkey D. Luffy, a young man who, inspired by his childhood idol and powerful pirate Red-Haired Shanks, sets off on a journey from the East Blue Sea to find a titular treasure and proclaim himself the King of the Pirates. After being a watcher or reader of One Piece, how have you reacted to the crazy growing of its popularity as of late? The writing's gotten better, uh, the character design's gotten better, the animation's gotten better, I don't know, it's just really cool. One Piece has recently passed the comic series Batman and sales gaining second place behind Superman, which is at first. This has gotten One Piece fans ecstatic for the future of the franchise. Will it surpass Superman? Maybe over time. I think definitely could. Okay. Recently, it's been an amazing time to be a One Piece fan. With the recent storyline, there has been some amazing stuff happening. This is Jackson Freldenhoven, the biggest One Piece fan you'll ever know, signing off. Barbecue. The smell of your favorite meat grilled to perfection. Chloe Lewis interviewed a local cook with some tasty items on the menu. Rackley's Q, we're out of Alma, Arkansas. You can reach us at Rockin' Rackley's Q on Yahoo.com. Um, we do competition barbecue, uh, competition steaks. Uh, we're really active on the competition SCA trail as well as the KCBS trail. Um, we won a few different awards and stuff like that, and people really enjoyed our food, so we thought, why not bring it to everybody else? So here we are. It's, it, it's a tremendous affair, you know. Hopefully you guys can uh, flip the camera around and take a look and see how many people are out here today. There's so many different people out here. Uh, everybody's brought their dogs. I've seen people with cats. They brought their catios, you know. So it, it's, a, it's a real family-friendly event. We sell pulled pork. Uh, we sell carnitas, uh, competition tacos as well. Um, most of our meats are smoked. Uh, we try to offer low carb ideas as well for some of the people, you know, that are counting carbs and stuff. So that's why we wanted to do some of the street tacos and stuff too. I'm Chloe Lewis from Airways Media, and as always, Go Airedales! <laughs> Thanks for watching this week's edition of The Airedale. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow all social media platforms. And as always, by the wise words of T-Mac, Go, Go Airedales! Airedales.